Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry problem in two ways. So we have triangle SRB, E is on RB, Y is on SB, M is on RY, and SE. We're also given that SM equals ME and RE equals EB. So these are midpoints. That's a midpoint and that's also a midpoint. So let's go ahead and start with our first method. Now our first method involves using areas. How do we use areas to solve this problem? So here's what I'd like to do. I'm going to divide this triangle up into pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this segment here so that I can talk about the comparison of areas. So how do I compare areas here? Well, notice that M is in the middle, so it splits up the triangles, both the RSE and the SYE, into two equal pieces, I mean area-wise. So let's go ahead and call these areas A, A, and B, B. Okay, that's the first thing I'd like to do. And then, of course, I want to be able to write everything in terms of A and B using the other relationships. Notice that RE equals EB, that means that the area of REY and YEB are equal, so this is also A plus B. So I'm adding A plus B, and that gives me A plus B, because E is a midpoint. Hopefully that makes sense. Great. So this area method is actually very helpful with these kinds of problems where ratios of, you know, segments are asked, especially this type of problem. So let's go ahead and see how we can use this. Now I want to focus on triangle SRB. And in triangle SRB, I want to focus basically at this point because that's where my 3 and x are separated. So here's what I'd like to do. I want to focus on two triangles here actually. RSY and RYB. So what is that supposed to mean? Well, they don't have the same area, but if you look at their bases, the bases are 3 and x. So what is that supposed to mean? You have two triangles and you know that their bases is like, let's say something like A and B. And let's call this area is S1 and this area is S2. These two triangles have the same area. I mean, sorry, not the same area, the same height. Therefore, the ratio of their areas is the ratio of their bases. In other words, S1 over S2 is the same as A over B. That's what we use to find AA and BB here. Same idea, but the areas were equal in that case. So now, looking at the big picture, I noticed that the area of SRY is A plus B. So I'm going to compare that to the area of RYB, and that is going to be 2A plus 2B. All right, yay, I can finally say 2B or not 2B. Okay, and that ratio is equal to 3 over X. But notice that we can take out a 2 here and simplify this. And this gives me 1 half. So from here, I get X equals 6, and X is what I was looking for. X is the unknown, right? Great. So this concludes the first method. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Now, what is my second method involve? Let's do this here because I have another picture. So the second method involves what's called mass points. I hope you are familiar with that. If not, please Google it and take a look because it's a really cool topic in geometry. So mass points basically tells us that, okay, we can just assign weights to the vertices. And here's the rule that we need to follow when we're assigning weights. Okay, we always have to make sure that weight one times distance equals weight two times distance. So weight times distance is going to be fixed on a line segment. We're going to start by assigning weights to each vertex. We're going to start at the outer vertices. And then here's another rule. When you have a segment like RB, and we know that E is on RB, E is in the middle basically, not necessarily right in the middle. It is, but it doesn't always have to be that way. Uh, that means that the weight at R and B will be added, and you're just going to assume that all the weight is accumulated uh, at E. Let me go ahead and clarify what I mean by this, by assigning weights, because that's the best way to understand it. So let's go ahead and start by assigning a weight of 1. And by the way, for assigning weights, you don't have to use any specific number because what matters is the ratios. So the only thing that matters here is the ratios. As long as you keep that constant, that's good. So let's suppose this is a weight of 1 and this is a weight of 1. 
Now, how could I assign the same weight? I can because E is a midpoint. So the weight times the distance here is going to be the weight times the distance. Since the distances are equal, the weights are equal. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Uh, the formula says weight times distance always have to be fixed on that same line segment. Great. So that means that uh, the weights are equal at these two vertices. Great. And what is our next rule? The next rule is you're supposed to add the weight to get the cumulative weight or whatever accumulated weight. So in this case, that will be a 2. Okay. So at E, I have a weight of 2. Great. Awesome. Now here's the thing. From this point, I can go to S. Notice that SM equals SME, uh, therefore M is a midpoint, which means that if I assign a weight of 2 for E, then I also have the same type of weight for S. So that means I have a weight of 2 here as well. Awesome. And that tells you what? 2 plus 2 equals 4. So the weight at M is supposed to be 4. Let's go ahead and use a circle for that. If you want, you can use different shapes. Doesn't really matter as long as you know what you're doing. Now, this tells me something else. Notice that how I can transition from one segment to the other by using the weight relationships. Notice that here I have a weight of 1 and here I have a weight of 4. So what does that tell you about the weight at y? Because the sum at uh, weights r and y needs to equal 4. Uh, 4 minus 1 equals 3. In other words, this is supposed to be a weight of 3. And this is the most critical part because that tells you what? Well, here's the thing. I considered different segments and I was looking at Ry and on Ry I noticed that the weight at Y has to be 3 because 3 plus 1 equals 4. Makes sense, right? It's basic arithmetic. You're basically adding subtracting numbers. But that tells you more than this because if you look at this carefully, here we have another relationship, right? On SB, I have point Y since point Y is shared and I have all the weights. Wait, what is that supposed to mean? Well, it just means that you can find the ratio of the side lengths because what's our rule? Weight times distance is fixed. So let's go ahead and write down that relationship for our segment SB using Y as our reference point and let's see what happens, right? Well, weight at S is 2. So weight times the distance. Of course, when I say the distance, I'm talking about the distance from the point in the middle. Not necessarily right in the middle, but I'm talking about the point in between, I should say. So the point in between, the distance between S and Y is 3. So I'm going to multiply the weight at 2 by 3. Okay? So it's kind of like, is that, is that called momentum in physics? There's, there's a term for it. But anyway, if you think about a fulcrum, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Like when you have a fulcrum, it's kind of balanced, right? You have a weight here and you have a weight here. And what do we know if this is balanced? then you have weight times the distance equals weight times the distance. This is what I'm talking about when I say mass points. Great. So 2 times 3 is supposed to equal, what's the weight at B? 1. What's the distance? X. Awesome. This tells you what? X equals 6. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.